So if our general strategy about what we're doing per week is this, we need to spend some time then following accounts uh, and interacting. The point of those two in general are again to make to make other people aware that we exist. So uh, unfortunately if you build it they will not come. You have to build it and advertise it and then they might come. So what that means then on Pinterest is we need to find other people on Pinterest and get them to follow us. So this again will be a little deja vu and what we've talked about the other days. But let's see how it works on Pinterest. It's going to go back again to search. So back on up on the top here, either searching or looking at topics. But if you search, you're going to find things that are not in all of the topics. So I'm just going to see here again with alternative baking methods. I get pages and pages of results. I may one day exist or appear on these results also. All pins on Pinterest are found here. Notice these filters. Um, if I if I search again, it may it may change as new stuff is added. Your pins. If I've got pins that have these keywords, they'll show up here. This is just sort of a way to then cross check. People are searching these possible keywords, but I have no keywords like this on my own stuff. So you might think about then incorporating those keywords in your own pins if you are finding people searching and finding that stuff. Pinners. Uh, this might be too specific, this kind of search, but in theory, this is going to show me accounts. Let me just make it simple with baking. If I search baking, pinners, I see all of these accounts on Pinterest with that topic. Baking. I see Sally's Baking Addiction, Pillsbury Baking, Jamie, My Baking Addiction, etc. Nice baking. So one, one tactic is simply, on Thursday, I'll spend some time to follow. A smarter way. Look at the stats. Look at the numbers. Sally's Baking, 53,000 pins, 369,000 followers. A lot of people seem to think that the content that she's sharing is great and follow her. Less people follow Pillsbury Baking. I don't know if that's officially from Pillsbury, but Pillsbury Baking. Then we've got Jamie, 100,000. Willow, 63,000. And as you go on, you'll see different amounts. 1,000. Is 1,000 not as valuable as 96,000? Well, the number's lower, but that doesn't mean it's less valuable. I would love to have a thousand followers. One percent of that is still, you know, ten people, ten sales. That could be great. Um, and then, of course, as you go on, you'll, you'll see twelve followers, seven followers. So, looking at those numbers, you can make two decisions. If you choose to follow an account with hundreds or thousands of followers, that means you're following an account that is valuable, but unfortunately that doesn't necessarily mean you will get a follow back. Oftentimes these accounts that have a lot of followers usually don't follow you back. They're too busy posting and sharing and being active and selling and all of that. So don't be discouraged if you don't get a follow back from someone that has a hundred thousand followers. Usually the odds are better that you'll get follow-backs from those that have less followers. You know, just to pick a number, less than a thousand. Usually those ones are more real people that might want to follow you. These ones that are big, they've got an empire to run on blogs or their website or something, so they probably won't follow you back. But if I'm looking at Sunshine Baking and I click follow, I've chosen to follow what Sunshine Baking is sharing. Goddess of Baking, follow that, sure. Laurie Baked Lava Piland. Well, the filtering is not perfect because I don't think she's really about baking. So I'm not following that one. Um, the Half Baked Life, that could be figure of speech. 
that's that's the downside of simply clicking follow. It's it's not the best way. I'm just showing you this is one of the tactics we are we're following. The better tactic along these lines, which takes more effort, is I'm gonna click on their account. I'm gonna see what are they sharing. I don't want to follow an account where they've got one baking pit, uh, board and everything else is technology or cars or sports or politics because I'm gonna see it all. If from this top level here I click follow, I chose to follow everything. So Thermomix Baking Blogger, I followed, now I've followed um, Okay, Baking Beauty. I followed that, and now I also followed pins, cupcakes, cakes, brownies. Okay, so everything's on point here. But I'm also following jewelry, and I'm also following makeup and words. I didn't really want to follow all those topics, but clicking a like at the top level, I follow everything. So better tactic, which takes more time, is, okay, let the baking begin. I'm going to click on that profile. I'm seeing all of this stuff, and I really want to follow Eat Dessert First. So that board, I can choose to follow. I don't really care about dinner, but I care about cakes. I'll follow that board. This account, Let the Baking Begin, gets a notification. It says, Victor's Bakery followed your board. Victor's Bakery followed you, followed your board. They get the notification. These accounts now have become aware that I exist. And if I have this strategy that I'm going to do this once a week for five minutes, ten minutes, an hour, whatever, I'm making more accounts aware that I exist. And if I have my account fully set up and I've got a few pins to show for it and I filled in my bio and I put in my logo, I could get followbacks. But again, don't get discouraged if you don't. Don't get discouraged if it's not one-to-one. -one. Don't get discouraged if you've spent all day following 50 people today, really researching them and following 50, and you get seven or two. But two is still better than zero. Two is better than what you started off with. Popular, popularity breeds popularity, but it still stems from content. I'm going to build these followers little by little, but I'm going to share stuff, and little by little it's going to snowball. Chuck started with zero followers, like me. And Chuck is at 33,000, and I'm not. But honestly, I'm not putting a lot of effort into it. I'm spending a lot of time on, on Google+, honestly. And for myself, I have 4 million views on Google+, personally. So it's wherever you choose to spend your time and efforts. And it's still about content. So refining this strategy here about following accounts or boards, you need to do your research. You need to search you need to search and don't just click follow willy-nilly. You need to look at people's boards, pinners, pins, and you need to go deeper. Search topics, view pins, pinners, boards. And you want to dig deep, which is click to view before following. Pinners with lots of followers are less apt to follow back. I'm not saying always, I'm just saying that's what you will probably see yourself. So if you follow the accounts that are not as followed, they will follow you. And of course what you're going to be doing is follow uh, pinners, boards, etc., 
uh, that matter to your business. You're seeing people that are uh, posting about baked goods. I'm about baked goods. I'm going to follow them. They may be interested in what I'm about. I'm not going to follow that account that's all about finance if my company's all about baking. I don't know. They could be into finance and baking. But if you follow those that are into baking and you're into baking, you might have a better chance to get the follows from those that matter. It does matter uh, where you're following people if it matters that you have a location. If I ship my cupcakes throughout the US, it doesn't matter where they're at. But if I follow people in Japan and I don't ship to Japan, then it matters. And if I have a store on Main Street, San Diego, uh, then it doesn't quite matter as much that I'm following people in New York because they can't come to my, to my store. It is valuable that I do get them because let's say I do follow someone in New York and they're never gonna come to my shop but they have a thousand followers and they shared my cupcake and one of their thousand followers is in San Diego and they see oh they're in San Diego I'll walk to Main Street and buy the cupcake so it really depends then there's no right or wrong answer but if you have a physical location you would try to focus on people that are physically nearer to your location that's something I'm going to spend some time on on one of the days of the week. The other thing that I'm going to spend time on, the caveat with following is you're going to see all their stuff. Now when I go back to my home feed, now I'm going to start to see the stuff of the, of the topics that I followed, as well as the individuals that I followed. And again, I, I blindly followed a few, so I'm going to probably start to get some stuff mixed in here that I don't really want to see. So I'm seeing some yoga stuff here. That's not what my niche is, but I'm going to see it because I chose to follow. How to make a baseball wreath for your front door. That's not at all what I'm trying to look at here. The best flowers for your balcony. I'm not looking for that, but I clicked follow. I followed everything. I didn't, I didn't target. I didn't go specific. So to unfollow, you need to go back to your profile, look at who you're following, topics that you're following, pinners that you're following. Be careful here because if you unfollow at this level, you will unfollow all of their boards. So if you look at boards, And this will also show you individual boards that you follow, you can unfollow. With pinners, since I did choose a, a global follow, I would have to go to their particular account and say, actually, not this one, not this one. So it's more trouble than it's worth, isn't it? Don't follow a person from the top level. You want to follow their individual boards, most likely unless everything that they're sharing is on topic. Yes? There's not really a percentage. It really depends on the network and who you're following. So I, I wouldn't worry about figuring out a percentage, but you're going to get better results if you're targeting accounts on a topic that you care about how many followers do they have. So they've got 369. They'll probably follow me because they're not such a huge entity that I'm one of the little people. So it doesn't hurt to try and then you can easily unfollow if it didn't work out. They don't get the notification that you unfollow. They only get the notification that you did follow. Same thing. Twitter as well. Alright, so the, so the next tactic, okay. If I don't want to follow people because I'm going to see all their stuff, the next tactic is, I'll search again, alternative baking methods. The next tactic here 
is the interaction, like Twitter, like Google Plus, elsewhere. If you hover over a pin, you get some interactions here. Pin it, which is the share. Then you have the the like. So let's say just randomly, I'm going to choose right here. How to make zucchini noodles. Click like on that. Uh, Danny F got the notification. Victor's Bakery liked your pin. That might be enough. Then they look at my profile. They see what I'm posting. They see what I like. They may follow my account or follow the one board or like one of my things. There's this whole gamut that we've been saying on all of the networks, which I wrote up, up here. Comments, likes, shares. Better in that order. Likes are the most minimal ones. I can like and like and like and move on. What's next? What's new? People will do that to me. It's not bad that I get a like. Of course, it's just the lowest level. The next level is a comment. Okay, let's say I want to comment on someone else's item right here. Cupcake bouquet. If you click on a particular pin, it shows it, it expands it, and if you keep an eye on the address, that is the address to that one pin. So even every single pin has an address. There's no way to customize that number, but that's, I don't know, the nine nine trillionth pin that's been added to Pinterest. Um, but anyway, you, you, you can look at a pin, clicking on it, and then you'll see at the bottom a way to comment, maybe hidden. This comment was from two years ago, this one was from one year ago. So it's not a very trendy pin at the moment, perhaps. But the point is, this is another thing that you can do. I can go here and I can add my own comment, and I could say, uh, this looks so tasty. Um, perfect for brunch. What you write here is a whole discussion that we'll have, um, because what you write here is going to depend on your goals, your business. Oh, I need to confirm my email, so it's not going to let me. This is one of the downsides of making a gibberish address. I need to confirm my email, then I'll be able to comment. But the point is, imagine that it let me comment. I'm commenting here. Uh, Vinefera gets a notification. Victor's Bakery commented on your pin. Worst case scenario, they look at that notification and move on with their lives. Best case scenario, they might reply. They might like my own post. They may comment on my own pin. They may follow my account. They may buy my product. All of those possibilities. Four ingredients. Four ingredient paleo Nutella cookies. So again, I'm looking at this. I, I click the, the item. I see it large. I can, I can comment. This one doesn't have any comments. Um, I'm seeing it has activity, 5,000 repins, 468 likes, but I'll, uh, I'll comment to get attention. Uh, Unfortunately, on all of these networks, there also exists spam and spam bots. That could be an account uh, that is a spam bot that uses techniques to get fake followers, and it doesn't matter. Uh, sometimes they they sell followers. I wouldn't get into sold followers because those those are worthless. They just inflate your numbers, but they're not going to be active, real accounts that buy your your stuff. So I, I wouldn't worry about those that 
I would be suspicious about those that have very little content in a board and lots of followers. And maybe in the beginning, when the person was active, maybe they really went through these techniques and got a lot of followers. And then they got tired of Pinterest and went off to, to Twitter. Who knows? They might have abandoned their account and people still followed it. Popularity beats popularity. Pinterest is going to show your board to more people, the more popular it is when people search. So, What you can also use the, the comments for, instead of you yourself commenting because you're writing here and you get their attention, but you could also use a comment for are to find more people that could be of interest. In theory, Abby and Cynthia liked this post enough to write something. And as I have on the uh, list here, the comment is a little higher value. And so Cynthia, or Abby, if I click, you can click then these commenters. And then this takes me over to Abby. And I'm seeing 59 boards, 3,000 pins, 156 followers. I could then do the same here. I could follow these, account, uh, these boards. Abby gets the notification that I exist. In theory, they see my boards. They follow my boards. This takes more of that effort. So three peanut butter, three ingredient peanut butter cups. So I'm going to see that. I don't necessarily have to like it or say anything. I could use it to my advantage. Comments, one comment, or actually, David saved this. No comments, but David and others saved this. So again, more leads. Let's check out David. I already have a bad feeling because it doesn't have the logo, and here. Well, house ideas, food and drink, 82 pins, zero followers. Hmm. Might not really want to, might not be worth it. No one else has followed. Most likely then, not very valuable to me. I could still use these low value accounts by checking. Food and drink has zero followers, but everything is attached spinach artichoke chicken bombs. Click on that. Let's see who's interacted on this. Can you save photos from Facebook? Do you pull photos off of Facebook? I think fa Facebook is the one that's very strict. Because Facebook is the biggest network. It's the 800 pound gorilla. And that one's the, the one that um, that doesn't play nice. So I, uh, I think also Instagram because Facebook owns Instagram. Yes. Did you talk earlier about how you can find the website? No, I just kind of said it in general that it's going to tell you, here's your code, add the code to your website. But we can, during the, the break soon, we can look individually if your particular one can be verified. Because it's, it's going to depend on people's websites. So basically, um, it's about being social on social media. What to share? Notice I, I hardly address that directly on any of the networks, because what to share is going to depend on you. And I can't say what to share for every single person if I say, OK, everyone, make sure you share infographics. Infographics are not going to make sense for my bakery, perhaps. Infographics are not going to make sense for my public speaking venue, perhaps. So what you're going to share is what you're going to figure out. What are your pictures? What are your blogs? What are your products, posts, uh, pictures, animated graphics, videos, blogs, etc.? 
So that's why you're also going to follow other accounts for inspiration. Remind me if I mentioned this class on a previous day. Did I did I mention already socialmediaexaminer.com? Yes. Yes, okay. So you can check that out. Uh, look up Pinterest advice, Pinterest tips, and you'll see plenty here and any other website online. And I like visiting this one. They've always got great articles. And you might get that inspiration that makes sense for your particular brand. Like I say, a useful thing to share is, is leading questions. Post something, but it's in the form of a question. Lead them to answer, or entice them to answer. Lead them to interacting with you. So if I'm going to share my own, my own picture, or my own content of a recipe, I'm going to say, here is our, uh, here is our traditional grandma's pie. What's your uh, favorite treat growing up? Um, so leading people to be to be active. Some of these where they're much more designed, like this this one here is just a photo. That one's just a photo, but this one's designed. This one's some graphic design going on. It's a couple of photos composited with text. That's that's Photoshop. That's some that's some graphics editor. Uh, reminded me of this. Did I mention one of my favorite online graphic editors? Pixlr.com? P-I-X-L-R.com? Pixlr.com? This is a free online graphics editor. It's like Photoshop Junior for free. You go here. Uh, I, think, uh, I think it works best on Google Chrome. But you go over to pixlr.com, P-I-X-L-R.com, and then you scroll down to see Pixlr Editor. You've got the editor, you've got Express, mobile, desktop, different versions of it. Uh, Express is that you can add filters to photos very quickly, crop photos, rotate photos, add effects and basic text, I think. It's very quick. Or if you know, if you have experience in some something like Photoshop, you can go here, Launch Web App, Pixlr Editor. That pulls up the online site here, create a new image, or open an image from my computer. So I can upload one of these sample pictures. And I've got these tools like Photoshop, so I can get the text tool. I'm going to hit Sale, use Coupon. Memes? Uh, I I don't have one honestly because I, I don't I don't do that as much as I could. Uh, I don't think sometimes I don't think I'm clever enough for them, so I don't I don't really do them. Uh, but what I would do is look up meme generator. And I'll find plenty of them out there, like memegenerator.net. I don't know if it's good or not, but this is one that quickly popped up here. So here I'm making my own graphic. Then I can save it, download it, crop it, all of that, and then I can uh, upload something more like this to Pinterest. More complex, of course, but it could give you better results. You don't know until you try. And you'll see how successful you're being once you look at your analytics every few days or weeks. So we're going to wrap up in just a moment. But any uh, any general questions on what we've been talking about today? All right. So remember, if you created a test account like I did, you want to go back to your settings. And there's going to be a deactivate button which you can click on to delete this account if you'd like. Or if you created a gibberish email address like me, you can just walk away and don't worry about it.
So as we wrap up here, reminding you next week will be uh, the YouTube lecture. I'm going to provide you a, a video. If you, if you don't have a, a video, I, I've got a video for you because we can't do very much on YouTube without a video. But if you have your own video, any kind of video will work. But um, we're going to create the account, upload the video, talk about getting views, and traffic and such on, on YouTube. Uh, and that'll be next week. So for the moment, we'll wrap up. We'll have a little bit of lab time until 9.30. We'll do it again next time.